Good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening. Uh, I don't usually go live this late, but I've got four pages worth of notes to go over regarding the State of the Union speech that President Joe Biden finished giving. It was a heated speech. We saw a different president that we normally see. Uh, he, he seemed to be on something. Perhaps uh, they had given him a shot of adrenaline or vitamin B shot or something, but he seemed to have more energy than uh, he, he usually has. So what I'm going to do, he spoke for 67 minutes, and uh, I'm just going to go through all of the four pages of notes that I took. Uh, I'm not going to go super deep on stuff because I don't want this video to be long, but I do want you to know what the president of the United States said, whether you consider him your president or you say, not my president, uh, I'm okay with you feeling however you want to feel, but I'm just going to tonight go through this as, as quickly as I can so that you understand what was going on. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Welcome in, welcome in. Feel free to share your opinions. I'm gonna go through a lot of things and I do wanna hear from you. I'm gonna stop and uh, react to you guys, but this is my reaction to President Joseph Robinette Biden's final, hopefully final State of the Union. And honestly, it was more like a campaign speech than it was trying to unify the union update people on what was going on. It was very, very bipartisan. And so let me go through this. Okay, so first off, President Biden was 30 minutes late to starting. It didn't start until about 9.30 Eastern. Um, this had something to do with the Washington, D.C. police allowed um, Palestinian uh, protesters to block the road. Now, Anywhere else the president of the United States goes, they block off the road for blocks and blocks and blocks. So why they would allow this, um, from everything I've been reading online, it's so that it would look like he went longer, but really he ended up getting there late and starting very, very late. So uh, Biden compared himself to President Roosevelt and that he was a great wartime leader, just like Franklin Delano Roosevelt. He compared Vladimir Putin to Hitler. He said that Trump would give Europe over to Putin if he were to become president again. Uh, he said the only way to beat Putin is to give more American taxpayer money to Ukraine. With our money, Ukraine can beat back Vladimir Putin. Okay, these are his words, not mine. He looked into the camera. He told Vladimir Putin that he will never walk away and will never back down, that you, the United States of America stands with Ukraine wholeheartedly and again, wants to give more and more of our money uh, over to Ukraine. He then shamed Republicans for January 6th, said it was the darkest day of American history, the worst thing that he had ever seen or lived through. Um, he said, you can't love your country when only your party wins. Biden then said, women uh, can't have babies because of the IVF ruling in Alabama and because Republicans want to block them from making their, their family choices. Now, the IVF, the uh, in vitro, had already been reversed. So I don't know why his speech writer didn't remove this. You know for a fact Biden did not write this speech himself, um, but that had already been unrolled, uh, and he, but he still continued to push on it because remember, abortion is the number one issue uh, for Republican, or excuse me, for Democrats. Um, he then looked at the Supreme Court and said to the Supreme Court justices, women will prove that you were wrong, meaning uh, the uh, Roe v. Wade, uh, unraveling of Roe v. Wade, and said that you guys have just woken up the most powerful voting base in America and that they are on Democrats' side. So women only like to vote for Democrats. 
He then blamed all of the COVID deaths on Donald Trump, even though more people died under President Biden than died under Donald Trump. Donald Trump also didn't have the vaccines. He didn't have the therapies. He didn't have the medicines that were demonized that they now prescribe for every single person that is sick. Uh, and yet again, he blamed all the deaths on Donald Trump. Biden said his U.S. economy is the envy of the entire world. Uh, Biden, uh, keep in mind, Biden never once said Donald Trump's name during the, the speech. He kept saying, my predecessor, and then he would say something evil about Donald Trump. My predecessor, and then something disparaging about Donald Trump. Uh, he also said um, that uh, signing the CHIPS Act changed the trajectory of the United States of America and that it will better America. He said that he has personally made record investments in red states and blue states, that he doesn't withhold any money from red states. What'd that say? Sorry. Oh, I'm making your blood boil. Okay, I thought you said you couldn't hear, hear me. Okay, again, I'm just telling you what he said. This is not what Stephen Gardner thinks or believes. Um, he said that it was Democrat unions that built the United States of America. Uh, he promised to lower prescription drug prices, wants Medicare to have the authority to lower prices on over 500 drugs, wants to... Um, wants to cut prescription, or excuse me, cap prescription drugs at $2,000 per year, even for cancer drugs that cost $10,000, $15,000, 20000 he's going to put pressure on them. He then made a slip and he said, get on Air Force One and fly with me to Moscow and I'll show you how to get things more affordably. Now, that is a giant Freudian slip because Remember, Democrats have been harassing um, Tucker Carlson for saying, wait a minute, if all of these sanctions are working on Russia and Russia is such an awful place, then why is everything more affordable there? And then he slips and says, get on Air Force One and go with me to Moscow and I'll show you how to get cheaper things. Okay. He also said he wants more money to go towards women's health, that women aren't uh, taken care of enough in the United States of America. Um, he said that he wants to give $400 a month to people that buy a, a house for the first time, or if you will sell your old house and move up, he will also give you $400 every single month. He didn't say for how long. To me, this sounds like buying votes, but if you are trying to buy your first house, that may be something that uh, resonates with you. Okay, he said that he's going to remove all the unnecessary fees for people that will get government-backed mortgages. So if you'll get a mortgage instead of with one of the big banks, if you'll get it with the U.S. government, that he will remove uh, all of those unnecessary fees, and you can thank him for that. Okay, he also said that he is uh, going to make rent more affordable and that they are going to dump money into renovating 2 million houses or apartments, and then they're going to make those more affordable. Uh, he said that he wants better educated force, that we need to invest more money uh, into uh, the children of the future. He then said he wants more jobs uh, for kids that don't get anything higher than a high school degree. Um, at this time, I noticed that uh, Donald Trump's social media website, Truth Social, had crashed. I don't know if there were so many people on there watching Donald Trump or if their servers were under attack uh, in order to embarrass Trump. But either way, Truth Social went down. I don't know if it ever did come back up. Um, okay, so for those of you that are joining, I'm just giving you a recap. I took four pages of notes on your behalf so that you don't have to sit through a 67-minute speech. You didn't have to wait 30 minutes while the president was late and, and patting himself on the back. So, um, okay, he also said he wants to cut the federal deficit 
by $3 trillion by making corporations and billionaires pay more taxes. I thought it was interesting because his own son, Hunter Biden, still owes the government $1.4 million in taxes that he refused to pay. Just last month, his own daughter, Ashley Biden, finally got caught up on her taxes. So they want to tax you, tax you, tax you, tax you. But his own family isn't even paying taxes. Um, and once they get once they get that money, they want to give it to illegals and they want to give it to Ukraine and they want it, it to go mostly towards war. So uh, he also said that his promise is anyone over four hundred thousand dollars is uh, excuse me making over four hundred thousand dollars won't pay an additional penny in tax. Now it would have been nice if he said you're not going to pay any more taxes, but he said an additional uh, no additional pennies in taxes. Uh, yes, I, I also wish that they would do more for the people in Ohio and also in Maui, Hawaii. Just reading some of your comments. I'm not ignoring you guys. Um, I'm just giving you a recap of what Biden said and some of the, the derogatory things that he said about Donald Trump. Keep in mind, he never once said Donald Trump the entire speech. Okay, he said 55 of America's best companies made over $40 billion and didn't pay any taxes, that won't happen. He's going to start taxing them 21%. What are they going to do? They're going to turn around and raise their prices. Th these corporations, if they get bullied by the government, they're just going to turn around and take it out on you and me. And so um, I understand the need to pay taxes, but I also understand it's very, very damaging to overtax people and then to be wasteful with our tax money, that's, that's just terrible. Okay, he also wants billionaires to, at a minimum, pay 25% tax, which means more billionaires will be moving their companies outside the United States. Uh, more billionaires will be um, hiding their money in the Bahamas and the Cayman Islands. Um, they do this every time. They raise taxes. The smart, the smart wealthy people, they just move their money, and then when somebody else comes in, they bring it back. So um, the, the, a lot of this is just wordsmithing, word games. He wants billionaires to pay for working people's child care and their senior care. He said, we have to take care of our seniors. I agree with that, but he's probably thinking that because he is one himself. He said that Republicans want to cut out Social Security and raise retirement age but that he will single-handedly stop that from happening. Those big bad Republicans that want to make sure we don't run out of money. Biden said that he will force snack companies to stop giving less Snickers for the same amount of money. He said shrinkflation is a real issue and that he's going to force them to not do that. This is obviously a guy that doesn't understand economics or how to run a business. He's never run a business. He's only ever... Uh, uh, skimmed profits off the top of his son Hunter's business. He also said that they're going to force credit card companies to adjust their late fee from $32 down to $8 and that this will kill their profits by $20 billion. Biden wants a thousand more border agents and hundreds more judges so that illegal immigrants can be processed into the country in six months and not in six years. Now, let me know your thoughts about that. Should we be processing people that came here illegally faster? I don't know. I, I mean, I could see both ways where it's like, okay, if you're going to kick them out, then yeah, we don't want them sitting on taxpayer funded money for six to 10 years. At the same time, to me, I got the feeling that he just wants more and more illegals to come into the country. He basically gave them an invitation on national network news to come to the country. Now get this, he said that Republicans in Congress won't give me authority to fix the border problem. Do you believe this? He, he's blaming the border problem on Republicans that won't give him authority to fix the border problem. Remember, we're in an election year. These guys are going to be using very, very slick language 
to make themselves look good while doing bad. Just like Elon Musk said, there's a lot of people trying to look good while they do bad. Okay, he said that um, this is terrible. He said that Republicans are to blame for the illegal gang member that killed Lakin Riley in Georgia. So remember the, the illegal immigrant that committed a lot of crimes in New York? They finally kicked him out, even though that's against sanctuary city rules. Uh, he went down to Georgia and then kills this beautiful young woman in nursing school who's just out for a walk. She was literally jogging and, and walking. He's saying that she is dead because of Republicans, not because of his policies. Biden said he's ready to fix the border now, but Republicans just want to fight about the border. Now, it's funny that he suddenly cares about the border now that he and the mainstream media can't cover up the fact that 10 million people have come into the country and that he signed off on 320,000 people being flown in in secret to the United States of America. Um, he also said um, that he's doing more to fight climate change than anyone in the history of the world. I mean, talk about an ego on this guy, right? All right, now this is kind of scary. He wants 20,000 Energy Corps people going around the country ratting out climate abusers. So basically 20,000 tattletales given authority from the federal government to, to, to be like if you idle your car too long or there's something basically... Um, Anyway, 20,000. And then he said before he leaves office in five years, he wants to triple that. So that would be 60,000 tattletales, like 10, 000, over 10,000 in each of the 50 states snitching, snitching on you if you do something that they don't like, if you don't buy an electric car, if you are, you know, idling, whatever it is, 60,000 of them. That's scary to me. That's like having your own uh, army of tattletale people. That's kind of that's kind of scary to me. Someone said that sounds a lot like communism. I I, I think you're right. Okay, um, let's see. Oh, listen to this. Biden said that America is safer because of him. Murder rates are down because of him, and that he will hire more cops to crack down on more crime, but. It's the Republicans that don't want him to do this. They don't, they don't want him spending money on this. Here's, here's one of the main problems is uh, the cops are arresting people. And then these district attorneys, especially these district attorneys that are um, put into office by, by George Soros, they just let people out. They, they just let them out. You can literally like look at the, the illegal immigrant in New York. Uh, they gang up and beat the, these cops up, and then they're literally out the very next day flipping America off, saying, ha, 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 we, we got out. So, But according to him, they don't want to defund the police. They want to uh, fund the police and that uh, you are safer because of him and you're less safe because of Republicans. Again, you guys, this sounded uh, very much like a campaign speech. This did not sound like a president trying to unify uh, the, the people of the United States. Okay, um, he wants, let's see, he pledged to do more for Israel and Palestine. He is doing an emergency order for the United States to make an emergency pier in the Mediterranean to get supplies to Gaza. Now, how can he, how can he do an emergency for another country, but can't do an emergency for our own border. Lisa Darden, Stephen Gardner, you are a liar. How? How am, how am I a liar? Or, oh, because I'm reading Joe Biden's words? Sheesh. Okay, so he's going to use emergency authority to go and help Gaza and put in this emergency pier. I, I hope that those people get help, but it just shows that he does have emergency executive authority to get stuff done, just not for America, right? Just not for the border. 
Okay, he also called on Israel to allow more supplies into Gaza and for them to kill less innocent people. Cowboy Rob, so Israel and Palestine can have two states, but Mexico and America cannot, right? Yep, I guess that is what I'm telling you. Uh, let's see. Thank you so much for the super chat. Sham, love your work, dude. Thank you, Sham. I really appreciate that. Okay, um, I'm almost done here. I want to respect your time and be in and out. Um, he said, I'll do whatever it takes to keep shipments going through the Red Sea and will disable the Houthis' capabilities with the U.S. military. He wants competition with China, not conflict, and said, I wonder why this never occurred to Trump. Again, he didn't call him Trump. He called him his predecessor. So his predecessor um, wants to go to war with China, but he wants to go into competition with China. Okay, uh, Biden says that he will end cancer and signed the ARPA-H bill in order to do that. Biden said he represents honesty and decency. Some people his age only seek revenge. Now, again... Uh, he was obviously uh, talking about Trump. So he, he so he compares himself early in the speech that he is Franklin Delano Roosevelt, a good and honest Democrat. And then now he's saying that he represents honesty and decency and that Trump represents uh, someone who only seeks revenge. Biden said he was the youngest senator in Congress and the oldest president of America and that that gives him more experience than anyone else. He said he is focused on the future while his predecessor, or Trump, is stuck in the past. He said that he will give the middle class a shot at success, where Trump will only give billionaires a shot at success. He then said that he is the president of all people, uh, all of the United States of America. All right, that is your recap. Uh, in about 23 minutes or less, I want to say thank you guys so much uh, for stopping by. Um, you can definitely go and, and fact check this stuff. These were my notes. I did not quote him word for word. I am giving you a paraphrased summary of, of what he said. Um, and, and you guys can take it for what it is. Uh, it's really late. So thank you guys so much for being up with me this late. I love each and every one of you, and I will see you tomorrow on the next interview or the next video. Have a good night. Love you guys.